Last season, I was able to pick these two mowers up from their owners. The Honda had some serious issues that was going to cost a lot of money to fix, and the Toro was given away to make room in their shop. I haven't made that many videos on the Toro, but the Honda was a huge project requiring several videos to cover. I hate to say it, but the time has come to say goodbye to them. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's projects are these two mowers, one from Toro and the other is a Honda. In this video we're going to get them ready for the mowing season for the last time because they both have new homes to go to. It's sad to see these two go but I can't keep all the mowers I find so they're going to have to go sometime. I have to say, the one I'm going to miss the most is the Toro. For those of you who have watched my older videos, you'll know that I'm biased towards this brand, but even if I wasn't partial to them, I still have to admit, its build quality is extremely good for the price range that it's in. The most impressive part of this entire mower is the mowing deck. Even if there wasn't anything else that was good about this mower, the mowing deck would still win me over. Now, for those of you who care about engines, then you'll be happy to know that this one has a bulletproof Briggs flathead on it. As long as you change the oil on a regular basis and keep it full of oil, this engine will last a very long time. In fact, this one has been around for over 20 years. Now the Honda speaks for itself. In fact, my personal mower is a very used and abused Honda with a plastic mowing deck and a broken self-propelled system. I'm just waiting for it to break on me, but to this day it keeps mowing and performing at a decent level. This one, however, was in really bad shape when I found it. It was so bad that I had to replace the engine, and while I was at it, I also went with a big block conversion instead of replacing it with the 160cc engine that was on it. Now getting this one ready for the mowing season shouldn't be too difficult, we just need to sharpen the blades, put some fresh oil into the engine, along with some gasoline that doesn't have any ethanol in it, and then check to make sure it still works like it should. I didn't use it all that much last year after doing the swap, so we might have to make a few adjustments to it. Now I want to start with the Toro and the reason is when I got this mower it started and ran without any real issues aside from a worn return spring for the handlebar. I opted to just bend the spring to make it work better so we shouldn't have any problems with this one. When I put these into storage I drained the oil out of them so you think the first thing I would do would be to put some in there. However since there are no fluids in the engine I can lay it on its side and not worry about any spills. The last time I had this mower running, I noticed that the fuel line was extremely cracked and wasn't going to last much longer, so I'm going to replace the fuel line, which is quite the accomplishment as most mowers don't last long enough to need this repair. The next thing to do is to roll the mower on its side and remove the blade for sharpening. With the mower on its side, we can see the extra parts they installed, which makes this mower an excellent mulching mower. These black wedges are there to help improve how the grass clippings move around the mowing deck, and I'm sure they also help with the bagging as well. The other thing that makes this mower special is the transmission. As you can see, it looks like the normal personal pace transmission, except it's longer. This extra length fixes the inherent problem with the regular transmission, and that's bushing wear. They added two extra gears to do this, and should make this transmission last as long as the rest of the mower now. As you can see, this blade isn't that bad, but it's not sharp either. Now, you don't need a sharp blade to cut the grass, but it puts less strain on the engine, and the cuts look a lot cleaner as well, along with the mulching. Once the blade is off, I can see there's some grass clippings stuck to the top of the blade. I want to get rid of this, as it could cause the blade to be unbalanced. It's a good idea to balance the blade after you sharpen it, but that's if you intend on grinding a lot of metal away, which is not what I do. Now, I don't show you how I sharpen my blades, and there's a really good reason why. There simply isn't anything special about putting an edge back on the blade. I just use a handheld grinder to put an edge back on the blade, and that's it. Just be very careful, wear gloves, hearing and eye protection, and most importantly, take your time. I don't normally perform a full tune-up, which would include replacing the spark plug and air filter, but from the last video on this mower, the filter was absolutely clogged with dirt and grass. At the time, I didn't have a new filter, so I shook the majority of the dirt out of it, which there's nothing wrong with this method, but this one had been neglected for too long, so we need to replace it. So this is when I make a mistake. I started to put some gasoline into the tank and that's when I forgot I hadn't replaced the cracked fuel line yet. The leak wasn't that bad so I picked up the right side of the mower to move the gasoline away from the pickup. Now normally to replace the fuel line I would take off the air filter base but this style of base has an integrated primer bulb and if the gasket for it is damaged the primer may not work which is something I want to avoid. 
I'll start by removing the clamp on the fuel line near the tank and then work the end of that line off of it. Now to get to the other end of the line, I'm going to need to remove the top cover. Once the cover is gone, we should have access to the other end of the fuel line. As you can see, this fuel line is in really bad shape. This has to be the original line because these don't get this way unless they're very old. Now the clamps are still in good shape, so I'm going to remove them and use them for the new line. This fuel line is quite expensive at $1 to $2 a foot, but when you need one, there's really not a good alternative. I have installed these without clamps before, but they typically end up leaking after a few years because the rubber starts to harden. Once the line has been cut to size and the clamps have been put on the ends, I can now install it back onto the engine. Now you could try using some Tigon fuel line so you can see if there's fuel in the line, but when it gets to this size, it's really expensive compared to the rubber fuel line. Once the line has been installed, I can finally put some gasoline into the tank so it can make its way to the carb. The reason why I want to get fuel into the carb is because I need to see if it's going to leak, and if it does leak, I need to figure out why. Once the gasoline has been poured into the tank, I just have to wait and see if any of it will start leaking from the front of the carb. Surprisingly, this doesn't happen instantly, and it could take a minute or so. Now, after waiting for about a minute, I still don't see any gasoline leaking out of the carb, so I'll replace the air filter, put the correct amount of oil in the engine, and then try starting it. Hopefully, it'll run like it did when I put it up. I can't stress how important this part is. Now take your time and pour a little bit at a time and check it frequently. If you have your owner's manual or you looked up online and know the exact amount of oil your engine holds, by all means measure that amount out and pour it in, but I would always recommend that you check the oil level multiple times. If you don't get the right amount of oil in your engine, this could be the last season your mower sees. I know it looks like there's too much oil on the dipstick, but don't forget to look on the back side where the marks are. This time, it looks like it's between the low and the full mark, which is just fine. You don't always have to fill it to the full mark, but I would get as close as you can. The last thing I want to do is to put some grease in these fittings for the rear drive wheels. This is quite unique for this level of equipment. If I recall, these fittings are also on the commercial version, along with the fitting on the transmission, which this one unfortunately doesn't have. Now, I really am impressed with this machine. It started on the second pull and it sounds great. It picks up quite a bit of dust, but it just means it's really good at bagging grass clippings. I really am sad to see it go, but hopefully the next owner will take good care of it. If not, you'll see it again on this channel, just hopefully not too soon. It's now time to do the same procedure with the Honda, except this time I've already taken care of the air filter and there are no fuel line issues with this one, so this should be pretty straightforward. We need to remove both blades to put an edge back on them and then reinstall them. Now this mower came from storage as well, so there are no fluids in it either. So this is one of two bearings I had to replace on this mower because it has a clutch for the blade. If you turn the clutch assembly, you can see it turns, but the bolt in the middle doesn't, which means it's working like it should. The other bearing is on top of this assembly. The bearings aren't too difficult to change, but personally, I don't care for the system because these bearings have a tendency to fail over time. Now you can technically service them, but most people won't ever go to that extent. Now the blade system is the main reason I like this Honda. This is of course my opinion, but of all the mowers I've had, I really like the cut quality and its ability to mulch. The second reason is of course the engine. Now I have read a lot of comments from people who have given bad reviews about their Hondas, but I typically chalk it up to poor maintenance. Once back on the ground, I put some fuel into the tank, remove the air filter and its cover, turn the fuel valve on, and then wait to see if any of it will start to leak out of the front of the carb. After about a minute of waiting, I don't see any, which is great news. Now the reason I keep doing this test after getting my mowers out of storage is because the carb bowls don't have any fuel in them during storage. The float will hang in the down position for several months and sometimes they get stuck in that position which means the carb won't be able to regulate fuel flow and it leaks either out of the engine but in the worst case scenario is that it leaks into the engine which could damage it if it's ran with this oil and gasoline mix. 
Of course, the last thing is the most important, which is to add oil to the engine. Like I mentioned earlier, take your time and check it frequently. Just as a reminder, remember that on this engine, you do not screw the dipstick back into the engine. You only press the dipstick against the threads. Also, don't forget to wipe the old oil off before inserting the dipstick for an accurate reading. I checked the oil level three times just to make sure I was getting an accurate reading, which I was. The oil looks to be about 75% full, which is perfectly fine. Like I figured, it looks like I'm going to need to make a few adjustments on the engine. The biggest thing is I need to increase the engine speed by adjusting the governor spring, more specifically its anchor point. Now the engine seemed to run fine, but it started to have a slight miss. However, after running it more a second time while increasing the engine speed, the miss pretty much went away. I also had to lubricate the recoil spring so the pull rope would return better, which was something I noticed during the engine swap but didn't do anything about. After doing that and increasing the engine speed, it seems to be running a lot better now. After adding the correct amount of oil, sharpening the blades, and after making a few adjustments, these two mowers are now ready to go to their new homes and hopefully keep working for several more years. I really am going to miss them both. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.